Hey, thanks for joining me again for the second part in the series of our videos that are dealing with calculating tap conductor sizes uh, for electrical installations. So what we're looking at here is a standard electrical installation with our disconnect, our splitter, overcurrent, and then out to our load. I want to start out by pointing out the fact that 14100 tells us right off the bat that anytime we decrease the size of a conductor, uh, we require overcurrent protection or we're allowed to decrease the size after an overcurrent as well. Uh, what we want to look at is what happens and where are we allowed to actually downsize the conductor uh, for a tap conductor. Uh, in the previous video we talked about 14100A where we have that allowable downsize in the conductor for a voltage drop type of application. This one here what we're going to take a look at is taps not over 3 meters. So that is up to and including a tap conductor that is 3 meters in length uh, and why and where we're allowed to downsize that conductor. So. The first thing that we want to do with this is we take a look at our 68 amp load. Now, everything up on this side here, we're dealing with is still just a standard branch circuit calculation. And as I mentioned before, we are on the downstream side of an overcurrent device, so naturally we're allowed to have a downsized conductor. Okay, we want to point out we have a thousand kc mil is the feed from our 600 amp overcurrent, 600 amp disconnect. So we would have these 1,000 kc mils out into our taps, okay? If we do not meet the requirements of 14100, our tap conductors would not really be tap conductors. They would just be the same size conductors as our 1,000 kc mil feed. Now, when we think about that, we're talking about a 68 amp load here. I don't really want to feed a 68 amp load with a 1,000 kc mil. It's not very practical. It's not very economical. Obviously, we want to downsize that conductor if possible, okay? So, 1,000 kc mil up to our splitter. We're going to do a branch circuit calculation on this side. I have a 68 amp load. Note that we have 75 degree termination temperatures because we always need to keep 4006 in mind whenever we're selecting a conductor from table 2. So, 68 amp load. We are going to feed that with a conductor that is obviously larger than the load itself. So we're going to go to table two in the 75 degree column and we are going to select a number four that is good for 85 amps. It has an ampacity of 85 amps, okay? And according to 14104, we are going to protect that 85 ampacity conductor with, from table 13, a 90 amp overcurrent. Okay, so everything up till now has just been branch circuit calculations. The only limitations are from 14104 sub rule 2, or well, 14104 in general. Okay, past this point, past our branch circuit, this is where we take a look at our tap conductor calculation. So 14100 item B tells me that I'm allowed to downsize this conductor provided that, first of all, my conductor cannot have an ampacity less than the overcurrent that it supplies. So right off the bat, we have a 90 amp overcurrent. That tells me that I need to go to table two and select a conductor with an ampacity greater than that 90 amp overcurrent. So we go to table two, again, 75 degree termination temperature. We are going to select a conductor that is larger than 90 amps, which means we're gonna go with a number three, AUG, good for 100 amps okay because my conductor is not over than three or over the three meters this is how i would size my tap conductor for this particular installation in the next video we're going to take a look at what happens when our tap conductor is over three meters and under 7.5 hopefully this has helped thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time